Today, on This Thing Called Life, a Zoom conversation with Dr. Ernest Holmes. Dr. Ernest Holmes, founder of the Science of Mind, Dean of the Institute of Religious Science. I could talk to him for hours, but what I want to talk to him about for today is a little bit about this thing he loves to say, that there is a power for good in the universe and we can use it. My readings and my studies of his studies of the Vedas, the Upanishads, the Bhagavad Gita, the Talmud, the New Testament, distilled it all together into this fantastic teaching. And he speaks a lot about what he says is one of the greatest teachers we've ever known. He's talking about the man from Bethlehem, Jesus of Nazareth, known as the Messiah. This master mind was talking about a spiritual power in the universe, something so close to us that it is indeed nearer than our hands and feet, closer to us than our very neck brain, as the old Talmud said. Okay, there's a power for good that works for me as I believe. Got it. But is this power available to everyone and is it easily accessible to all? This power is not something we have to go in search after. It is something that is right here, close, nearer than our very breath. The way you describe this power, close, intimate, applicable, practical, but how do we use it? How do I make it applicable and practical in my life? Certainly we should have to use it in an intimate way. And we would certainly have to believe that the power exists. It's for us, not against us. It is willing and not reluctant. Can't simply say it willy-nilly. I have to believe in this power. We should actually have to believe that it really is done unto us as we believe then we would have to believe. What is belief, anyway? These are the things I want to discuss with you tonight, how it is that we could use this power for good, greater than we are, wonderful. The thing the whole world wants more than anything else in the world, the thing that you and I have for the taking, for the asking, for the using, power that responds to us according to our conviction in it. Seems we're not always aware we're using this power of which you speak, yet we use it every day. This power is really how we make our way in the world. It's simply the way that we have every experience. Right where we are. How close and how intimate such a power is. And how wonderful it is just to believe that we're going to learn how to use it. Great. So break it down for us. First of all, just what it is. Then we're going to talk about how to use it. Then we are going to actually get right down and use it in our everyday life. Okay, let's get started. First of all, the power that is bigger than you are and greater than I am is, of course, a spiritual power. You're talking about a, a spiritual power. What do you mean, spiritual power? We mean something that is invisible, of course. We don't see it. We don't touch it. We don't taste it. We don't handle it. We don't weigh it. We don't measure it. But we do feel it. Just as you feel beauty, just as you feel love, just as you feel anything in life. You constantly affirm that this is a power for good. And what I think you've discovered and what you're explaining to us is that we don't have to beg, plead, or beseech this power. It responds to us if we have faith and confidence in it. Now, throughout all the ages, people, of course, have prayed and their prayers have been answered. They have prayed with faith. It doesn't make any particular difference what kind of a religion they have had. That power has responded to everyone in the way he has used it. And that is why Jesus said, very simply, very directly, 
it is done unto you as you believe. Let us then analyze this saying of Jesus, that it is done unto you as you believe, and suppose in doing that, that we pause after this little word, as. Who knew? Well, I guess you knew this small two-letter word plays a big role in the process of what we believe and demonstrating how we believe. Seems like such an insignificant word, but it's the key to the teaching of this great master. First of all, he said, it is done by a power greater than you are. It is done unto you by this power, you don't do it, who has the power to create life. You and I did not make life. We did not create it. We did not think up ourselves. We awoke to the fact that we lived. And we looked about and wondered, what in the world is it all about? Why am I here? Is there anything in the universe great enough and good enough to come to my rescue when I need it, quiet me if I am disturbed, to bring peace to my mind if I am disquiet. Is there really power in the universe greater than I am? And is it good? And can I use it? Jesus said, it is done unto you. There is a power that operates for you, and how does it operate? It operates as you believe. Believe. Belief. Another important word. Tell us more about how belief and believing plays a big role in this process in our lives. We do not believe a thing just because we affirm it. I might say I believe there is a an elephant here, but there isn't any elephant. I might say there is thunder and lightning here, but I know there isn't. Belief is something that our own mind does not doubt. It is something that we ourselves inwardly do not deny. Sometimes I say I believe, and almost immediately a small little voice, well, maybe sometimes not so little voice, says, but. It comes from the deep recesses of my mind, out of the silence, but... You can tell right off. If you believe what you're saying, Shakespeare caused one of his characters to say, my words fly upward, my thoughts remain below. Words without thought cannot to heaven go. So you and I do not have to study very much to see, do I believe that there is a power greater than I am? Why, of course, we believe it. You know, I find it to be sheer brilliance how you work with belief and how you find these anchors for us to use these principles, these spiritual laws in our lives. And, you know, before I found your teaching, I, I felt like my life was just moving along and that if I needed to make a change in my life, I'd have to exert willpower on my own. But you say it, it's something more than that. Some mysterious thing which we call gravitational force holding you and I in place right now where you sit in your home. I'm standing here by this podium. I do not wonder whether or not this power is going to hold me in place. I walk a little to the right or to the left. I change my position always, I am certain. There is a power greater than I am holding me in place physically. So what's next? Yes, gravity holds us in place. Now all I have to do is just to transpose this and say there's another kind of a power. It is greater than I am. It responds to my belief, my faith, my confidence in it. And as soon as I establish this, then I must be certain that I actually believe. Now probably this is the key to the answer to every prayer that was ever answered since time began. The prayer of faith, of conviction. 
again, the great teacher, the great metaphysician, the great wayshower, he said, uh, when you pray, believe that you already have what you're asking for. So what I get here is that we must have belief, something, something stronger, a conviction, uh, something even stronger than faith. You know, Jesus didn't say, uh, God or this power will be displeased if you ask for a loaf of bread. And as a matter of fact, he fed the multitude. He did not say, God uh, or this power doesn't wish you to have any uh, enjoyment in life. He spoke of a joy which would complete ours. He said, it is done unto you, but as you believe, therefore, he said, when you pray, believe that you have. Just believe that you have. Just believe that I have. Doesn't sound all that difficult, although maybe I need to work myself up to it. Maybe I need something practical to get to that level of belief that you're asking of us. We believe that tomorrow will come. We believe that the sun will rise in the morning and set at night. We believe that the ocean and the tide will be there and the moon. We believe the grass will grow. We believe that our food will digest. And who is there who knows how any of these things happen? What do you mean, how do any of these things happen? Did you ever stop to think that the united intelligence of the human race, all the scientists living, all the philosophers, all the theologians, everybody put together, does not know how it is that a hen can lay an egg, nor does it know how it is that a chicken can come out of an egg. Isn't that amazing? All we know is we set the hen, and the chicken does come out of the egg. This is the mystery of life. This is the mystery of faith, the power greater than we are. What I find particularly appealing about what you have distilled, how you've distilled down these ancient truths, is that these principles, these spiritual laws, are available to everyone. Jesus did not say what is your particular religion? Spoke to every man in his own language. Just believe. And it will be done unto you. It seems too good to be true, doesn't it? It does sound too good to be true. But then I'm reminded of what one of your modern uh, students says, that this is so good, it must be true. But I guess we'll never know. Until we try it, as we're going to at the end of this short discourse, we're actually going to use this power, you and I, for a definite purpose. I'm going to use it for a definite purpose. You are, we'll watch and see, but let us be sure that we believe, just as we believe our food will digest, just as we know the sun's going to rise in the morning, just as we know that the world is still round, just as we know that you and I do not know how it is we can eat ham sandwiches, drink milk, tea or coffee, and have it turn into flesh, bone and sinew and blood and marrow. It all sounds so mysterious, but I got to thank you for making the mysterious sound simple. Everywhere we look, we are watching the mystery of life, the riddle of life. Someone has said, and I think rightly, that the riddle of life is understood only by him who knows that God is good, who makes a ladder of his faith, and climbs from sense to soul, finds no line between mere human goodness and divine, but judging God by what in man is best, 
with a child's trust leans on a father's breath. It isn't so hard to believe. We just haven't thought how easy it is to believe. So what I hear you saying is that we, we make it difficult, but it's really just as simple as saying it is done unto you as you believe. It's just the action of knowing that. That's all we need to do, that there is a power greater than we are, and we need to say yes to it. And you know, if we just take it that way, and we'll say, yes, the world is round, I am held in place by some power, and now I'm going to believe in another kind of a power. It actually exists, and I'm going to try it. And then when we stop to analyze what is belief, what is faith, it's very simple. Simple is not always easy, though. This is one of the great hurdles, however. People say, well, I, I just haven't got that kind of faith, merely because they think you're talking about something that's impossible. We're only talking about that which is completely possible, which is completely simple and direct, and something which you, in the secret place of your own mind, sitting there alone, you know it as well as I do, we all believe, we just haven't quite thought practicing our belief until something really happens. And then we have learned that while something in us rises and says no, the belief isn't complete, and what do we do then? I, I imagine we work to conquer doubt, yes? We just reaffirm that belief. You know, the mind has a very interesting quality, it acquires habits through repetition of thought. And the person who will really take himself in hand, understand this, and say, even though there might be something in me that right now uh, doesn't believe what I say, I, my words may fly upward and my thoughts remain below, I am still going to train myself. I know that this can happen. I know that there is a power greater than I am. There is nothing in me any longer that's going to contradict it. And quietly, sort of easily and gently, and I, I think flexibly. You know, did you ever stop to think you, you live with yourself most of the time? No matter how many there are whom you love, it is yourself that you live with all the time. It is yourself you're going to have to learn to be a good friend to. There is one who is a friend to all of us. And yet all too often, we're not that friend to ourselves that spirit is to us, that we, we in our doubt, we question our value, our worth. And, and let us not say, am I good enough to use this power? Why, of course, we are. The rain falls on us, doesn't it? And the sun shines for us, and the wind blows for us. There is no God who denies anyone anything that is good and right. So using the faith we have and believing in the power greater than we are, we sort of begin to expect things to happen. It would be a very interesting thing, even if it were only a game we were playing. How fascinating. How wonderful to believe that out of that which up until now, perhaps we had thought was a wistful wish, a wishful dream, something that couldn't quite be true. Out of all of this, we have longed for and we have yearned for and we have wanted. All that we can, all that we dreamed of, all we hope for, as long as we can believe as, as long as it's as we believe. Isn't it terrific? Right now. Maybe those dreams can come true. Right now, maybe the desire of our heart is already met in some divine intelligence that knows the beginning from the end, just waiting for our cooperation. I really love that you call this the science of mind. That means that what we get to do is simply practice it. We get to experiment with this and, 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 and try it out. So we would be trying the most fascinating experiment we have ever had in our lives. 
that dream, is it difficult for an infinite power? That hope, is it too much to ask for? That yearning and that longing, do not we have a right to expect that whatever the intelligence is and the power that put us here certainly knows how to take care of us? Listening to you, I certainly do want to believe. I want to believe that it does know how to make it good for me. But I imagine some folks are still wondering, some folks are still in doubt uh, because their experiences have showed them that they're not sure, that they can't be sure. Perhaps we just haven't believed. Now we're going to practice believing. We're going to say to ourselves, yes, there is a power. We can use it. We will use it. And then we're going to be intelligent and we're going to figure out how to use it until we ourselves believe. Wouldn't it be wonderful if you and I knew that there is nothing between the right desire of the heart, the yearning of the mind, the longing of the soul, and that which might be but our own belief or our own unbelief. And if that is so, then we have the proposition where we can handle it. Or you and I can control our thinking. Control our thinking, like snap our fingers just like that, our life is changed. Change your thinking, change your life. If not instantly, then certainly we shall come to it gradually. But it doesn't matter how we get there. We are going to come to a place where we believe in the power greater than we are, believe in ourselves because we know it, and believe even right down to the method we're using that our own thought, our own meditation or prayer, whatever you choose to call it, will convince everything within us that seems to doubt, perhaps out of all the doubt and the yearning and the longing, you and I will come to know there is a power greater than you are, than I am, and we can use it. Well, Dr. Holmes, show us. Let us watch how you demonstrate these principles, how you put this into action, and what do you call it, treatment, contemplation, meditation, or prayer, and I think we're ready. Now, friends, we're gonna use this power very simply, very definitely and directly, and we're going to try to believe that it is done unto us as we believe. And we're going to try to just let go of every doubt or uncertainty, every lack of conviction, just because it's a power bigger than we are. We can trust something greater than we are. We don't have to trust ourselves. Now we call this uh, meditation and meditation is something you do to yourself, something like this. Suppose you just get still a moment. Let's, uh, let's even close our eyes for just a moment. Kind of shut this out from these things that disturb. And let's say, I really believe right now, down deep in my heart, there is a power for good. This power is directing me because it's intelligent. I shall know what to do. I shall be directed. There will be some impulsion, something that will tell me what to do. There is an intelligence, you see, that actually knows. So let's turn again to it and say, Every thought and idea that is necessary to the accomplishment of the good thing I desire 
which expresses a more abundant life and which brings only good to everyone. It's all happening to me now. Now that's quite simple, isn't it? But if this power is here, if it works the way uh, I'm sure it does, then it works on the simplicity of our own thinking. It isn't power, profound words. It isn't any spiritual gymnastic we go through, just like a child. It's guiding me, it's directing me right now. Now let's again turn our thought inward, close our eyes, and let's say each one of us that we greatly desire that we shall bless everyone we meet, that we shall bring happiness and joy to every situation. Let's believe that it is true, and then it will be true. And it's true not because you and I know very much, we're very ignorant, but there is a power, and it does work, and it's working right now.